back here at the Monarch 10 E lathe. Now, what I want to point out is uh, machines from 1960 to 1983. Now, this one here is in 1983. Now, in those years, there were uh, the module drive uh, vacuum tube and they're single phase. So if you can run a clothes dryer, you can run this machine, move it right into your laundry room. It's kind of the neat thing about the vacuum tube machines. Now, after 1983, they're um, all solid state for quite some time until they went to the AC uh, inverter drive. Now, at a glance, you know, if you're looking at photos and stuff like that, the uh, vacuum tube module drive ma machines that are easy to work on, in my opinion, will have the disconnect switch right here. Now, the later machines, 1984 and later, they move the switch right in here. And sometimes here, but it's not <clears throat> no longer there. So this is the module drive one. We'll have the switch there. If it's located anywhere else, it's the um, solid state um, regenerative drive. And uh, that's, uh, I don't know, that's a hard one to keep going these days. So I thought I'd point that out. Now, um, as a matter of fact, I got the uh, somewhat battered 1984 uh, brochure that shows the uh, change location of that. So that's, you know, that's kind of interesting. And that's a nice blue paint job. I always wondered what happened to that lathe. Now, if you're going to buy one of these machines, it's kind of a good idea to uh, get the serial number and, uh, you know, even before you purchase it, if you're going to get serious, you know, it might be worth it to spend a hundred or more dollars and get the manual for the machine. And there's a lot of advantages to that. And ask them for everything they've got. Be sure to do that so you get all the prints and just whatever information. Now, what that kind of helps you do, if there's parts with the machine and chucks like that, you can um, go to the original order of the machine and see, see what came with it. And if uh, a lot of this stuff is still there, that's a very, very good sign. Now, uh, another thing, to look for, and I'll point this out real quick. Um, I'll get the uh, camera loose here. Let me try that. Now, this old machine over here really has a lot of wear on it. And you can see the edges of the carriage here. You can actually feel where it's been battered so much that it's rounded over. And that's just from a lot of use. And this is still a great machine with a lot of wear. And of course, uh, the most wear is going to show up here on the inner side of the, of the um, front V-way. Okay. Now, this is the older style headstock with the uh, three oil windows. Now, we get back over here to this machine, you can see the edges of the carriage are a lot sharper. It just hasn't, <laughs> just hasn't been battered. That's, you know, that's just one of the things I would look for in a machine, because you can't help but battering these things up if, uh, if, if they're in a lot of use. The later machines have the single oil window. They run cooler at the higher speeds, like you see me run this uh, machine out. Um, it, not that the other machines, anything's wrong with them. It's just that uh, they made it so uh, this machine circulates the oil. And so it runs considerably cooler. Now, there's some 
no changes I've seen in this part here. If I can get that loose. I really haven't seen <clears throat> any changes from, uh, you know, from 1960 to uh, 1993. Really, really nothing noticeable. But we get over here into uh, this compartment, and there were changes. They went from the <clears throat> from cutler hammer switches to these uh, square D switches that operate faster. And uh, they did a device here that did away. This is the uh, quick the quick slowdown relay. And it replaced a large coil that was in there, big round coil. So this is one of the later improvements. And for some reason, they changed the label to a red label in about 1980 or so. And it just seems like these machines are a little bit more deluxe. You know, they did... And, you know, you think about automotive and stuff like that in the 70s and the 80s and stuff, the cars weren't all that great. But these machines kept getting better. It's like there's no bad year 